Hey guys, welcome back to AmSam Fam. Thanks so much for coming along with us today. So we have kind of an unscheduled video for you guys this week because we got a surprise a few days ago. We got a letter. This letter is from Department of Marine and Wildlife Resources and they were informing us that we had 10 days to be off the dock. Ah! <laughs> so, um, we've gotten pretty comfortable here being tied up to the dock. If you can hear behind us, we've got our neighbors serenading us beautifully and it's one of the perks to being here on the dock and we can park our car here and it's easy to hop on and off of the boat and to run errands, get our kids to school, whatever we need to do. The adjustment of moving onto the boat was a big adjustment but it was made a little bit easier by being able to be tied to the dock. Now the reason this is happening is because they are planning on extending the dock right here where we are, which is great news. We're excited about that. It'll open up some more space for boats to be able to be tied to the dock and it's going to look new and it's going to be nice and beautiful. And so it's a great thing that's happening, but for us, <laughs> we're kind of freaking out about it. And here's why. Okay, so what does this mean for us? We're going to have to go out and get tied up to a mooring. Um, <laughs> that's what they told us. But from what we've heard, there aren't any spare moorings out in the harbor. Uh, we don't know where we're going to be. We don't know, um, you know, how close we'll be to shore. We do know that we'll be far enough away that we're going to need a working dinghy or skiff to get us to and from our boat to the shore so we can do everything that people need to do to uh, you know stay alive and the other thing that we really need to do is set up a water catchment system so currently we make all of our own power you guys have heard us talking about that before between our solar panels and our wind generator and luckily we've got that taken care of but currently we hook up to the water source here on the dock to fill up our water tanks to be able to you know shower wash our hands wash dishes all of those things that you need water for and so once we are away from the dock we won't be able to hook up and so those are the two projects two really big projects we've got some other little ones but those are the two ones that we've got to get done before well let's see we are t minus one week one week from today, we've got to be ready to be off the dock. So our first project is getting a working dinghy. Now we got a dinghy that came with, the, with our boat. And when the previous owner left, the, the dinghy was in great condition. It was basically brand new, but from sitting out in the sun for over a year, it has kind of fallen apart <laughs> like all the seams have kind of opened up it's not holding air and the bottom fiberglass bottom has just completely fallen off and so we've been looking all over the island asking around if anybody has a different dinghy that we could buy and there are just no dinghies for sale no dinghies available so we have made the project to try to patch this inflatable dinghy back together. So Nate and I have been working the last couple of nights every every evening when we finish up with work we come out here and we've got we found this two-part epoxy marine adhesive that we're trying out. Um, we're crossing our fingers that it'll hold in the end. So this is where we're at right now. As you can see we do not have a full dinghy right now. <laughs> this is not seaworthy, even just to go back and forth from the boat to the shore. So we've got this two-part epoxy, this two-part marine epoxy that we were able to find here on island. And we've been little by little going through and finding all of the places where the air is leaking. And we've just been stuffing the little cracks full and then covering it on the outside. It does not look pretty but we're hoping that it'll do the trick as you can see we are 
<laughs> using anything we can find just to hold these pieces together to get the glue to stay um, to adhere these pieces to each other so that it will become airtight and it'll keep the air in and keep the water out so that this dinghy will work for us and then the other part of the project that we're working on is as you can see here is the back side of the bottom and it's completely detached and so we have to take this um, two-part epoxy adhesive that we've got and little by little stick it in between the this layer of the inner tube and the fiberglass bottom and then we just slather it on the outside um, just to make it as secure as possible so it's friday night you can tell the sun's going down we've been out here working Trying to patch up these holes. We got the adhesive on all the holes. We're going to let them cure um, overnight. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get up and start working on our water catchment system. We got all the pieces, and now we just need to put it all together and cross our fingers that we can make it work. Um, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, so with all of our crazy electronic cords back there. This is actually like a kind of like a tool chest, a nice wooden chest. If you didn't know better, you'd think it was built in because it is in here. It doesn't move even a little bit, but we have to get it out because we got to get behind it. And the way it's been put in here, I don't know how they got it in. I don't know how we're going to get it out. So it's going to, we're going to try not to break it, but we've got to get it out because we gotta run our water uh, catchment down behind this. So we're gonna give this a, a try. So this is a lid that will close here and it's jammed up in here. Uh, if we can get the lid down, I think we can get the whole thing out, but I don't know how we're gonna get the lid down. Let me know if you want me to stop recording. Oh. You get that? You got it. <laughs> okay. Step one complete. Never mind. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, I guess. <laughs> this thing's got to be screwed down. Whatever those are, they look very strict though. Okay, so we got that uh the big chest out of here. It's a beautiful old chest, but I don't know that we're going to put it back in, actually. We're having some real serious thoughts about whether that's the best thing to be here. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, the plan here is that when we get out into a mooring, we're going to need water. And what we could do is fill up jugs with water every single day and make it like, you know, an hour every day is dedicated to filling and running jugs of water back and forth. Or we could try to catch water. And it rains so much here. If we have a big surface that we can catch rainwater off of, then uh, even just like the few rain showers we get a day and even on like the light days should be enough to give us like dozens of gallons a day, if not hundreds of gallons a day, which is enough for us. And uh, so we got to catch this water and we're going to catch it off of our deck, but it's not really clean water coming off of there. I mean, there's some salt in there, uh, just a little bit, not too much, but there's also I don't know, probably some bird poop and dirty feet walking on it. So we don't want to drink that water, uh, not as it is. So what we're going to do first is there's going to be a hole coming down through here, which is really scary to cut a hole in our deck, but I think we know what we're doing on it. There's going to be a hole that comes down through there. There's a filter up on the very top of it to kind of catch all the big stuff coming off the deck. It's going to come down through a swirl filter, go down through some pipes to a 
even better filter before it goes down into our tank. And then from our tank, there's gonna be a, a drinking filter that is like a three-stage filter it will go through before it gets to our pipes. So ideally we'll be able to collect enough of the debris and filter out enough of the bad stuff that it will be good clean water. Hey, what are you about to do? <laughs> I'm about to drill a hole in our deck and I'm so nervous about it. Teak is tough, so you got to push down hard. have to grind around the edges a little bit just so it can sit totally flush down in there because yeah. it's you can see there's a little bit of a lip there that yeah. water is just going to collect there instead of go down into our tanks it's really close yeah i think you should go a little more so it's sunken in just a tad yeah all right we've got all this adhesive stuff just caked all over it we ran out of this, what is this, the... 3M4200? 3M4200. We ran out of that, it got all dried up, so we were using this silicone sealant um, for the rest of it. So we're gonna squish it down in there. <laughs> okay, so we got, coming down here, got the filter. We need to connect this hose to the end of that circle it down behind the back of this it's under the floor and make it connect over there to that bit that's popping up right there that's already connected into the water tank so as soon as we get that that should be the last thing then as soon as it rains we should be collecting water that's so awesome let's get it finished up <laughs> it's been a long really really hot day so. yeah and then let's pray for rain i know yeah we don't pray for rain very often but let's do it all right so i I think we've got everything in its place. Everything's connected. I think everything's secure all the way down to the water tank. So I just filled up a pot of water with our water from our water tank <laughs> and I'm going to pour it down. Okay, it's the end of Saturday and we were able to get the water catchment system all set up. We didn't even get to the dinghy today, so we will get back to that tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm going to call today a success. We have sunshine outside right now and so we haven't had any rain to really give it a real good trial yet, but chances are it'll rain within the next 24 hours here because it always does and we'll be able to really, really see our water catchment system working the way that we think, and we hope that it will work. All right, we got way too much sun today, and we are tired and exhausted. Oh yeah, and the inside of our boat is a disaster because it's all torn apart. Uh, so we're gonna go grab some dinner and clean up and call it a night, and we'll get back to work again tomorrow. All right, we have five days left, five days and counting. So we're back out here, we're at it again. It did not rain last night, which is kind of amazing because I feel like it rains every night, except the one night we wanted to try out our new water catchment system. That's okay, we'll get rain another night. But today we're switching gears and coming back to do some more work on our dinghy. It is crazy sunny and hot out here, if you can't tell. It's really, really sunny. And so Nate rigged up this great 
little bit of shade here with a tarp. <laughs> Pretty ingenious to shade us a little bit. We've been out in the sun a lot and we, we both have a little bit of sunburn on us. So we're trying to be a little smarter today. So what we're going to focus on today, <clears throat> as you can see, we've been patching up these holes and we realized that um, we've got some more leaks in addition and even kind of coming off of the holes that we already patched. And so today we are going to take these. This is our one last really big hole that we hadn't gotten to yet. We're going to stuff this full of the putty um, adhesive stuff and then we're going to take it and just basically paint over these seams because these seams are where all the holes keep appearing so we're just going to slather this putty stuff on here so that it just it won't have anywhere to escape anymore. Nate is starting to mix the putty adhesive stuff together. What's this called anyway Nate? PC11 marine epoxy okay so i keep saying putty adhesive stuff but it is it's kind of a putty <laughs> as opposed to some epoxies that are like basically liquid this is more of a putty so you can kind of um kind of use a, a little paddle or something to to slather it on rather than um kind of pouring it on or painting it on we're still going to kind of paint it on but with a stiffer brush and um this isn't exactly what we wanted but we suffer from a limit here on the island it's part of living on an island is that there's only so much here we can't just keep on driving down to the next hardware store to find the thing that we want if we can't find it and it's not here we either have to order it or just deal with what's here this is all so last minute that in this case we have to just deal with what's here and that's what this stuff is so we're hoping it's going to work we're also looking for a different dinghy but the idea is to try to do enough to this as, as ugly as it needs to be um, or as ugly as it may end up uh, we're going to just do as much as we can to this to make it work for at least a month or two or three. Right, guys we have done everything we can up to this point you guys saw that we were able to set up our water catchment system we still haven't actually really been able to give it a try it still hasn't rained <laughs> and there's big questions about whether it will actually collect enough to make much of a difference for us but the problem is we really can't be in the situation where we are having to just fill up jugs and jugs of water and go back and forth and back and forth every day uh, it's just not reasonable so we've got to figure out something and we're hoping that's going to be the solution but i feel good about what we've done and yeah i f i feel like it's going to work our other big project was the dinghy as you guys could see we are not done <laughs> we have not finished that project hmm. and i think we still have i mean each time we put new layers of the epoxy on it takes a good 24 hours to cure so I think we still have at least a few more days of working on that project. Yeah, we're, we've only worked on the top of it. We're gonna flip it over and see what kinds of holes you have to deal with on the bottom. But we're out of epoxy, so we can't do anything until we can go get more tomorrow anyways. Yeah. But I did kind of pump it up a little. We put that layer of epoxy on eight hours ago and I pumped it up a little bit because it all feels completely dry. It's not tacky at all, but not enough to put real pressure in it just to kind of help give it a little more shape. And it's looking good so far, so I'm optimistic that it might work. But we've got to go get a lot more of that epoxy, and we're just going to put so much on it, it's going to be ridiculous how much <laughs> epoxy is on there. But I'd rather it look ridiculous and have just an obscene amount of epoxy than it leaking air and sinking on us. Because we've got to have something yeah. that will work. Otherwise, we're going to be swimming back and forth. <laughs> uh, I won't. <laughs> So we've got a few more days working on the dinghy and then we still have to find an outboard motor for it and just like there are no dinghies available for sale here there aren't many outboard motors either to be specific this is something you guys could really help us with 
the motors that are available, there's some brand new motors and they look great. They're Mercury motors, but we have heard some conflicting reviews about Mercury motors. Um, we don't know nearly enough about outboards to, to know what to believe. And so let us know in the comments below what you think about motors. If you have any experience with it, should we just pick up a Mercury motor because they last forever, they're so great. Should we absolutely not get one? Should we pull it out and get a Yamaha or or anything else, uh, just let us know. Give us some of your opinions and help us understand what to do there. We don't have a great huge budget right now, so we're trying <laughs> to do what we can, but we also don't have a lot of other options. So we're gonna have to kind of bite the bullet and do something like that. Guys, give us your, uh, send us all your positive thoughts and <laughs> keep us in your prayers yeah. that we can get this figured out because uh, truth be told, there's real reason to be nervous at this point. It's going to get weird and it's going to be uncomfortable no matter what. We're just hoping we can manage it and find some way to make this work to, to a point that we can get back to living like life as usual. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to be really honest here. It has been kind of a whirlwind few days since we first got that letter and just trying to get everything figured out and just trying to wrap our heads around and completely comprehend how our lives are going to change now. We have gotten really comfortable here having our boat tied to the dock and to be moving out to the middle of the harbor. Um, it's going to mean more big changes. I mean, just thinking about, you know, taking the kids to school and going to church, like thinking about riding on the dinghy probably getting a little bit wet if it's you know anytime we need to go we have to consider if it's raining or if it's just like the sun is beating down we're gonna be so hot and like be drenched with sweat by the time we even reach land and so all these things are going to mean some big changes some more big changes for us which um, to be honest it's part of what we signed up for we when we bought a sailboat and decided to live on it we knew that that was going to mean some big changes in our lifestyle and honestly we had we bought the boat with the intention of one of these days you know as soon as borders start opening up and as soon as we get more practice sailing of taking it out and sailing to new places and going on some new adventures and sometimes that's going to mean anchoring out um, away from land and using a dinghy to get back and forth and everything and so it's something that we knew would or could happen um, just this time it took us off guard throughout this whole process since we bought the boat we have been on this super steep learning curve <laughs> learning how to sail which you just saw us um, taking our boat out for the first time but even more than that I mean I've been doing a lot to get the boat cleaned up and looking pretty again I think that our boat has so much potential to be a beautiful beautiful boat and so I've been trying to put in a lot of time and a lot of work to just like bring her back to life again and Nate has been doing so much with the electrical systems. You've heard us talk about solar and wind and and hopefully we've got our water all set up now. And we have learned so many things that we never ever thought that we would learn. And one thing that we have found to be really helpful is Skillshare. Now while Skillshare, a lot of the tutorials they have have to do more with business which has been really helpful for us. It's helped us out in the kitchen through cooking tutorials. One tutorial that has been really helpful lately has been Electric Circuits, The Basics of Electrical Engineering by GoFig Trainings. This is a whopper of a tutorial. It is four hours and 20 minutes long, so it is intense and it dives really deep. But the great thing about it this tutorial and all of the tutorials on Skillshare is that they're all broken up into smaller bite-sized bits and so we have not started from the beginning and worked our way through but what we've been able to do is look through and find the segments that are most applicable to what we're working on at the time some of the ones that have been really helpful for us are branches in a circuit and all about series and parallel connections. Nate has done most of the learning about <laughs> electrical systems, I'll be honest. But 
it's nice to have both of us having at least a basic knowledge and understanding of electrical systems just in case Nate's not around or if he can't get in to work on it at the time then I'll be able to jump in and pick up the slack and so I've even been going through and learning things that I never thought I would ever want to know <laughs> but with Skillshare it's made it so easy for us to jump on and learn what we need to know and it's all been explained in a way that's easy to understand even if you have no background in electrical engineering so if there's something you've been wanting to learn more about whether it's diving in deep or maybe just scratching the surface of something that you're slightly interested in, Skillshare has a deal for you. The first thousand of our subscribers to click on the link down in the description will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. They've got over a thousand different tutorials that you can check out and see what really speaks to you and what sparks that little bit of interest in you for you to be able to learn more about. So go ahead and check it out and after you do let us know what you signed up for which tutorials you're taking and let us know how it goes for you all right guys like i said it's been a long few days and i know we've got a long few days ahead of us still to make sure that we're ready for friday to be able to leave the dock stay tuned because we are going to be back in a week maybe two once we've got everything figured out to let you know how it's all turned out for us. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you'll be alerted so you will not miss our update when we let you know where we are and how we're doing. All right, fa. Okay. It's the last connection point, right? That's it. So we're gonna wanna like kind of strap it down Kind of connect it to the wall so it's sturdy. Yeah. But that's it. It's 